FML is a non-fiction article by Michael Hobbs in which he argues that millennials are, and I quote, screwed, financially speaking. Hobbs divides his paper into four chapters. Chapter 1 discusses the difficulty millennials face to find stable jobs and the prevalence of contractors instead of employees. In the second chapter, he talks about how millennials are much more prone to go through a stage of poverty at some point in their lives compared to pre previous generations. Chapter 3, titled Rip Your Chances of Affording a Home, discusses how the economic situation of millennials is harshly damaged by rents due to the fact that having a place of your own has become a privilege that very few can enjoy. Finally, in his last chapter, he touches upon the government policies that are to blame for the millennials' financial crisis and suggests how to improve them to fix the situation. The author, as a millennial, offers a point of view of one of the first millennials, writing in the first person throughout the article. The use of I, as Coley describes, has the immediacy of an eyewitness account. By doing this, he ap accomplishes the purpose of making the reader to identify oneself with the article. However, because of the different interpretive lens and the role of context, this is most effective when it's, it is read by the intended audience of the author, Millennials in America. Adding to his non-fiction writing style, the use of occasional conversations is also included in the article, enhancing action and characterization to maintain the reader engaged with the text. Moreover, the conversations provide other points of view, although of other millenn millennials as well, which adds to the credibility of his argument. The author is selective with the dialogue fragments, but does not add things that would diminish the truthfulness of the paper. The use of t statistical facts throughout the article provides evidence to his argument that helps him create that feeling of fear, presumably felt by him, in the reader as well. However, the way in which every reader perceives his work is directly related to the interpretive lens and context of the reader. As a millennial, it is easy for me to engage with the text and feel a natural interest in an article that discusses a situation I live in and I'm about to face more directly in the coming years of my life. Coming from a Mexican middle-class family, which means a not very well-positioned situation living as a student in San Francisco, one of the most expensive cities in America, having a student loan and with the hope of economic success in a first-world country, the article brings my hopes down as the author ach achieves to cause fear in my future. Furthermore, the use of expressions such as FTW, TFW, FML, RIP, helps his article to be compelling for a millennial. It is important to understand the role context plays in how a reader perceives the written, the written work. There are two aspects of context worth considering. The first is the context around the author, a millennial in America that is directly affected by the situation. The other is the context of the reader, which is of great importance in the article. One of the many contextual aspects that can change the way in which the reader receives the text is gender. Tahira K. Hira and Olive Magenda state in their article titled Gender Differences in Financial Perceptions, Behaviors and Satisfaction that there are differences in the way men and women perceive financial issues. The author, as a financially well-positioned male, misses to address, like gender, other factors such as country of origin and the financial situation which impact the way a reader perceives the article. A person with economic stability might not give much relevance to the piece as their financial well-being will be hardly affected. A person from an older generation might not be impacted the same way a millennial might, because the mentioned consequences do not apply to them. The author tone suggests that he is attacking and blaming older generations for the situation that millennials now face. Sentences like this one highlighted suggest millennials are victims and none of what is happening is their fault. As a millennial, apart from feeling scared, might provoke a feeling of anger towards baby boomers, as they are depicted as the perpetrators of a situation described as terrifying by the author. The author explicitly tells the reader that he has to, the purpose to create those feelings since the very beginning of the article.